Life's good right now, y'all. I'm staying in a mansion in Duluth, Minnesota and getting paid to shoot a feature film. I really don't have any complaints. I've had a few really good nights here and I've set up an observatory on the second deck and I've gotten a couple really good promising pictures, but I'm really working on honing in these images even more because I've really just been trying to get it up and running. So after a month and a half of troubleshooting, I'm now dialed in and really I'm just trying to hone in the image now. It's been a lot of fun. This is where it gets more interesting and fun for me because I'm really not someone who wants to sit on a computer and troubleshoot through issues, but I do love astronomy. I love observing the night sky and that's really what all of this has to do with. And it's not simple when you get an entire telescope and try to get images. There's a lot of hurdles that you'll have to get through, but that's what makes everything so much more worth it. When you finally get an image that's worth your time and is just breathtaking. In this last week, any moment that I can get in between shooting this movie, it's been astrophotography. I've seen every sunrise for the past week. It's a humbling experience to watch the sun rise over Lake Superior, one of the biggest freshwater lakes in the entire planet. And yeah, I've, I just feel so thankful for all the opportunities I've got here. And I cannot wait for an awesome, fun time of astrophotography. So let's do it. So as of recently, I have gotten a lot of promising images on this telescope in the mount. But one thing I have noticed that is lacking with this is that pretty much all of my images are slightly out of focus. I think I can still get it a little more sharp. So finally, this came in the mail. This is a Batnov mask. The nice thing about a Batnov mask is that it gives you a three pattern diffraction spike on a star. So while you're imaging, you can move the center spike so that it's right in the center of the two other spikes. And that's when you know you have tack sharp focus. Focusing for astrophotography is a huge pain if you don't have the right tools. So a Batnov mask is a great way to save headaches. Oh man, there is so much pollen on this thing. So in the sky surveys that I've been doing for the past week up here, I've picked out a few targets that I know I want to spend my time on. So now I can really make use of my time under really clear skies. It's a little bit darker here than where I, what I have at home. So that's really nice. So I can get a little bit better images with less effort. 
Darker skies is key. But the first thing we gotta do, like usual, is focus and make sure that the tracking and polar alignment is good. So I'm gonna get through that routine so we can get started on, on imaging. Polar alignment is not typically a comfortable endeavor. Pro tip, you may wanna take your lens cap off. Okay, so now I am going to demonstrate what a bat knob mask does for you. I'm gonna unpark the telescope, go to objects, and we're gonna choose a bright star to focus on. And right now, just above the horizon is Vega which is just above the constellation Cygnus. So we're gonna hit OK and hit Go To. So at first the telescope isn't gonna have the best pointing accuracy, so we have to do a couple things first. We wanna do something called plate solving. We're gonna take an image of the night sky, have it solve for it, and then it'll sync the telescope's coordinates to where it's pointing. And then we'll be able to slew with very good accuracy at that point. Okay, so now that we've slewed to Vega, I can see that the telescope is not pointed towards it. So I'm going to use my guide scope and hone it into where Vega is so we can start our focusing procedure. The simple act of having a guide scope like this can really help you in your procedure of finding targets. What I like to do is I use this hand controller and look through the guide scope here and then find the target. And if everything is zero, that can make your job a lot easier. Okay, so this star right here in the center is Vega. And I just put the bat knob mask on and we're now taking a 10 second exposure. Okay, so now you can see what the bat knob mask does. It creates this diffraction pattern in the image. And what you wanna do is get this center spike right down the middle. And that means your focus is tack sharp. And it looks like we're actually pretty good. So this is a really easy way to get really sharp focus without having to worry about going into live view mode and making the star as small as possible. Because even with distortion from the atmosphere, it's gonna to be tough getting that exact small pin sharp focus. So tonight we're hunting for Hercules. In Hercules, there is a massive conglomerate of stars called the Great Globular Cluster in Hercules. Its catalog number is Messier 13. It is a spectacular target to image and I'm really, really, really excited to get well-guided, well-focused images on it so we can see every single little pinpoint star in the globular cluster. So right here we can see it on our list. We'll hit OK. And you can see we have a reticle that'll show about the size of what the globular cluster will be because we've plate solved and everything. And then we'll hit Go To. All right, so the telescope thinks that Hercules is there. So let's see if, it, if it's correct. Okay, so the telescope has done plate solving and we have M13 perfectly centered up. Focus is great. We just gotta get PhD2 running, select our guide stars and start imaging. It's gonna be really nice getting a good amount of exposure on this target. The test images that I took looked absolutely phenomenal. So, couldn't be more pumped here.